Hello, this is going to be uh, an experiment of sorts. I'm going to use a Khan Academy new uh, programming, JavaScript program, um, and I'm going to try and write a game from scratch. Um, so lately I've been writing uh, sort of side-scroller games, which are two-dimensional games where a character moves left, right, up, down, uh, along the canvas. So I suppose I'll start out by making a image variable. Once you get that much typed in, then this little pop-up box shows up. So. I guess I'll just pick some random, and um, so this is kind of like a uniform resource locator, but it's like specific to this function, and it'll go ahead and get that image from their server and set it um, as a p image, <coughs> p image uh, object inside of this boy variable. So. Just as an example, this will display that image. This name needs to be the same as this name. So I'm passing um, these three parameters into the image function, and that causes this picture to be drawn over here. So that's not very interesting. Um, what we need to do to make animations is to have this function and I like to think of uh, the draw function as like a flipbook so here is another essential function um, it's like saying put me down a fresh page this is shorthand for 255, 255, 255 in the RGB color scheme. So um, that is essentially white. Everything of every color uh, equates to white. Zero of every color equates to zero. And if you just put a single number in, then um, it means do all of them the same. So if I wanted to pick like a gray scale of 171, I could either write that and get this gray color, or I could write just 171. I hope that makes sense. So 171 background, that's going to be like the color for um, the pages of my flipbook. And then anything after that is going to be uh, drawn onto that page and then this function gets called automatically by this website like every 30th of a second or 60th of a second. I can actually change how often it gets called by setting this function with some parameter one for example. Now to demonstrate um, how this works let's go ahead and set a uh, variable up for the boy um, instead of having uh, hard-coded hard-coded means you're putting numbers in where you could put variables so instead of hard-coding his coordinates um, I'm going to make one of them for right now be a variable so that I can modify the variable Why isn't it moving? Oh, it is moving. It's just moving incredibly slowly because I set the frame rate all the way down. So, um, and this function isn't necessarily going to make your frame rate 128 FPS um, frames per second. 
uh, it's going to talk to your CPU and it's going to try to uh, set that frame rate up for you. So I can put some ridiculously high frame rate in, but my CPU isn't necessarily going to be capable of rendering the screen this many times a second. So, but anyways, I can't think of hardly any situations where you'd even want that to happen. 30 is a very reasonable frame rate. So here's an example of a conditional. And I'm going to use an inequality greater than. Um, and I'm going to use a system variable width. That's already defined in the system as the width of the canvas in pixels, which happens to be 400. So I could hard code this as 400. But it's always good to get in the habit of um, using the width variables. So if the boy's x coordinate is off the screen, then set him back where we, where we had him out to begin with. Now that's pretty slow. And instead of messing with frame rate, what we can do is to increase the incrementer that we're adding to the variable. This is the incrementer. Oh, this was shorthand for um, plus one. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can say the variable is equal to whatever it used to be plus its incrementer, and then you can change this. Why isn't it working? Interesting. to like go back and look at it to see what I did. I do not know why that happened. Anyways. Um lost my train of thought. So back to game making. This is a function that gets called automatically every cycle of the draw loop. Um, there's a whole slew of uh, functions. Like if you look in the documentation, mouse and keyboard uh, event uh, listeners. Um, What I'm going to do is, if I click on the screen, I'm going to have the uh, boys coordinates equal to the mouse y, x, y coordinates. 
so it'll just like jump right over there. And then I'll show you a more game-like way to do it, but first, just if you click it, boy x equals mouse x, boy y equals mouse y. Instantaneous teleportation to wherever you click. That's not very game-like. We want to see the boy slowly move from one point to the other, so it looks like he's walking there. So what we can do is we can say we can add to the current boy value a fraction of the distance in between. So if the boy's value is 100 and I click on 200, instead of making it equal to 200, I'm going to add 10, 20, 30. I'm going to add little fractions of the distance. So um, I don't think this is the correct way to do it, but first I'm going to try this. Um, this equal. So I'm going to take the the difference of boy x and mouse x. And I'm going to take a fraction of that, so I'm going to say one-third of the difference. So if it's 100 and I click at 200, the difference is 100, so one-third of that should be 33. And dist requires two points. So, <laughs> oh boy, I did not use that right at all. That's one advantage of working on Khan Academy is instead of your program just going to put, it brings up a helpful little message and says, this is the usage. Like I need to put in x1, x2, uh, y1, y2. Um, Not at all what I wanted to do. I remember um, when I did this the first time, I did the difference of something and something. So that's probably why I started out trying to write it that way. get good at copying and pasting code and then just changing like x's to y's as it gets closer um, the difference becomes smaller, so one third of the difference between also becomes smaller. And if you'll notice, um, when mouse x is greater than boy x, so right here boy x is approximately 100, right here mouse x is approximately 200, so 200 minus 100 is a positive value. That's great because I want boy x in that case to move to the right, which is adding a positive value. And when it's vice versa, when mouse x, when boy x is greater than mouse x, then this will equate to a negative value. So when I add a negative value to the previous value of boy x, I'm going to be moving that to the left exactly like I wanted to. <laughs> 